it was another early start. In fact, I think I left the house about half four, but I had a plane to catch up in the northeast at Dicey Airport, and I headed up there in the car in plenty of time to catch the nine o'clock flight. The only problem was, yep, you've guessed it, it was delayed due to har and fog over the weekend. However, after about an hour we were told we were ready to go and we headed out into this small plane and yeah, eventually got going. It was a bit grey and overcast but we were soon rising up above the clouds and were greeted by some lovely, lovely blue skies. spend too long at our cruising altitude and before long we were starting to drop down through those clouds again and we could soon see our destination appearing out of the mist. And it wasn't long before we were touching down at this small airport in the far, far north. I really was quite excited about this adventure. Next up was to find the car rental as it hired a car and I actually spent the day working before heading out and going north in this area up to the hike for today which was over the highest point in the island. Well that's been a journey and a half to get here. I'm at the start of today's walk and at the moment I am well, I think closer to the capital of Norway than I am to the capital of Scotland. Bergen's actually closer to this point than Edinburgh is. So you probably will have guessed where I am. Anyway, I'm, I'm here and I, I kind of, whilst here I thought, what can I do? It's, um, it's about oh, six o'clock at the moment and we're, you know, it's not long until we're at the longest day of the year. So I've got plenty of hours of daylight to, to, to go for a hike and I'm, I'm going to go up to the highest point on these islands and if I'm feeling energetic I think there's a there's a, a remote uh, bay with a beautiful beach uh, which I might visit you know as well but we'll see I'm gonna go for a hike just now weather's uh, it's fair it's not sunny it's just uh, it's a bit uh, overcast so fingers crossed the sun might come out but I'm not counting on it anyway I better stop waffling and get cracked on or I won't get anywhere yeah let's go the great thing about the start of this walk is you can drive your car right up to the masts at the top of the first hill and it's, it's about 760 feet, which means you don't really have that much ascent to do. Anyway, I was off and it was quite calm, there was no wind. That was fantastic and the ground, it was a bit rocky but it wasn't too bad. Well, it's the first little bit of ascent done, you see there's a wee, oh you might not be able to see it. There's a wee cairn over there, that's the first noble. Yeah, I'm going up here a bit further. There's another noble, and then we're uh, on the final ascent up to to this hill, and hopefully we'll get some nice views. I'm half expecting it to be clagged in. Hopefully this cloud won't lower, but it has been quite foggy here, which has been affecting the the air travel. Just hope I'm not stranded here tomorrow, <laughs> which could happen. Anyway, let's get going. Now that's me on the, well not quite at the top, but nearly at the top of the second bump. I'm just skirting around that cairn there. And behind me over my shoulder you can see the hill, the highest point in these islands. And I'm hoping when I get to the top there, there's going to be some magnificent views. And the cloud doesn't come down, we'll be fine hopefully. And in addition to the summit cairn, there's also another wee surprise up here, or so I believe I've read in the guidebook. So I'm looking forward to exploring that as well. But so far so good, it's not taking too long to get here. And it's not too windy, which is uh, lovely. I've uh, picked the right day for it. So, anyway, let's go before it changes. So you drop down a little bit, and a wee lock-in marks the start of the final ascent up to this high, highest point on the island. And the ground really does feel subarctic. There's short plants and red granite and lots of little flowers. Anyway, I was soon approaching this summit point. Well, this is me reaching the summit. And if you haven't guessed already, this is Ronis Hill, and it's the highest point in the Shetland Isles. And what a magnificent viewpoint. I think I've just got here 
marginally on time because I can just see, oh, you can see behind me now, this bank of horrors just rolled in. And it's, uh, let me see if I can get a seat down here. Ah, oh, that's better. Ah. Yeah, so this, uh, this horror behind me, hopefully, hopefully it's just a small bank of horror, but it's obscured the views back to where I'd come from. And it's just lovely. It's a, all the way up, we've had sea views and what have you. Absolutely beautiful place. And the Shetland Isles, I, you know, the, the unique place. And I met some of the, uh, I was actually at work today, and I, I told the, uh, the the girls that I was heading up here, and they're very, very uh, proud to be Shetlanders. They're, they're proud to be Scottish, but they're, they've even got more, more of this unique Shetland identity. And I looked into this, and there's quite a lot of uniqueness about Shetland. If you look at the gene pool, it's it's relatively unique. Uh, it, it's been diluted a wee bit in uh, recent years, but even now, about thirty percent of the population has pure Viking genes in them, or so so I read. And it's, it did belong, you know, until about the I think from the eighth century, the Vikings ruled the Shetland Isles, and it wasn't until the fifteenth century that uh, Scotland got them back and the story I read, whether it's true or not, I'm not sure, I'm not a historian, was that Christian the first who ruled over Denmark and Norway had a young daughter who was uh, to be married to the Scottish king or one of the Scottish princes, I think it was James the third or something like that, but he didn't have enough money to pay the, his, his part in the, uh, in the, the get together of these two, uh, two princes and princesses and he initially pawned the Orkney Isles, which were under Viking rule, to Scotland to pay for it, and then later on, he pawned the Shetland Isles, and that's apparently the, how the folklore goes, how Shetland became part of Scotland. And in that agreement, he said, I'll do this, but you have to be able to, in the future, any future Norwegian king has the right to buy back Orkney and Shetland, should they come up with the funds. Now, they've not done that yet, but you never know, it's a beautiful place, if you're watching Norway, <laughs> You're missing out. Anyway, there's another interesting feature here that I'm going to head to now, which I talked about before. So let's go and see if I can find that. Wow, what a place. So before heading on to that feature, I noticed there was a metal box on the summit. And when I opened it up, there was a, a little bit of paper and a pen to write down your... Yeah, write down when you'd been on the summit and what you thought of it, which was quite a nice, nice touch. So I did that, filled that in, and then headed over to the... Uh, yeah, to the other cairn, which you could see from this big summit cairn. It's quite an impressive summit cairn there, this side of the book and what have you. And just a shorter distance away, there's an even more impressive summit, a pile of rocks. And as you come round it, it reveals itself. There's, a, there's an entrance into it. Now, I'm not gonna, <laughs> you're not getting me crawling in there. Uh, with a pile of rocks, but it's a, apparently a Neolithic chambered oh. cairn, uh, which is apparently yeah. quite unusual to be sited on top of a hill. But it's uh, it's ancient, I think it's had some work done to it, there was a wee bit about, um, I don't know, the 1960s people had built it up and maybe restored it and what have you, I'm not quite sure, you'll need to look into that. But it's quite an impressive uh, place, it's, I'm not sure if it would provide shelter in a storm or not, but <laughs> it's uh, it's nice. But anyway, I'm gonna, I need to get going, the heart's kind of, kind of uh, still rolling in, it's not reached me quite, but You'll see it behind me there, but I want to head down to this uh, to this bay. There's a, a remote beach down here, and it's going to be a pig pig of a climb back up. In fact, the biggest climb of the day is going to be coming back, so I need to come back over this hill. So it's quite a difficult beach to reach, and uh, yeah, I've got about four hours till uh, sunset. So I'm going to head down here and get something to eat on the beach and see see what lake it is. Let's go. So I left the summit and the, my pace was quite quick because I knew I didn't have that much time. It was quite a long drop down to this remote beach. And yeah, I had my map out as well so I was a bit concerned about the har coming in. But it was lovely and I saw lots of bird life on the way down including some impressive bonksy that came over and had a look at me when I was walking down towards the beach. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't know if it's a dotrel or a golden plover, plumer. Uh, loads of birds. There must be lots of ground nesting birds here. Well, <laughs> I don't think there's any trees in Shetland, so they've got to be ground nesting. And there's a really f <laughs> strange noises. 
don't know if you heard that. Very, <laughs> very, very. Don't know where it's coming from. It's not the the, the high pitch one that you hear there. There's a. <laughs> anyway, I really hope you can hear that. And it sounded like I heard a. <laughs> sounded like a, a child screaming from down towards where I'm going the beach. Oh, it's funny how your imagination can run away with you. <laughs> I hope. Oh man, I'm a long way from anywhere at the moment, so hopefully there's no ghouls and ghosts. <laughs> right, get a hold of yourself, Murray. No such thing. Well, I can see the sea. And what a place this is. It's really quite steep. You have to make sure you come down the right way. I think, I presume when I get round to the beach, there'll be quite steep, uh, I don't know, cliffs or certainly steep slopes back up here, but look at this view behind me. Look at that! I don't know if you can make that out. But it's just a big, I don't know, I feel like uh, it should be on St Kilda or somewhere, or somewhere like that. It's absolutely magnificent. You probably won't see the beauty <laughs> in it. It probably just looks like a, a big rock coming out of the sea, but just at this position, it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to stop here and take some photos of this, see if I can capture anything. It's absolutely amazing. I'm a bit worried about the steep descent down though. <laughs> Can't seem to find any paths, but it did say it was pathless. But what a place, fantastic. Right, some photos and then I need to get a wiggle on. <laughs> After taking some photos, I continued on my way down to the Langair, and it's quite a steep descent, especially on this last part. And you've got to, you've got to be have, you know, just a bit sure of your footing. You wouldn't want to slip here. You're a long way from anywhere, and the ground and the terrain, there's there's no paths, and one little slip could have some serious consequences. So care is required. Well, I'm just about there, and I'm already getting that tingly feeling. This place. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, the hill itself, the views from the top of the hill were fine, but dropping down here, this calms. I can hear this, the the waves lapping the shore. And it's a kind of it's almost Mars-like from here. Look at this. It's just. I can't wait to get down there. My only regret is I've not got enough time to explore. I can only spend really half an hour down here. Uh, I need to. I need to start heading back so I will get back to the car before it's dark. What a place, there's sea stacks and wow, just, just amazing. I'm so excited about this. Right, let's go. There's, there's even a safety rope down there. Eek. Right, let's just be careful. <laughs> when you think you're just about on the beach, you come across this last wee sting in the tail. And there is a safety rope there which I made use of, which I'll, you know just helps your descent down onto the pebbly beach of the the Lang Air, and it's very red, red granite and pebbles, which makes it even more impressive. It doesn't see much footfall and can be a bit slippy getting down there, but what a place. This was spectacular. What a place. So I dropped down onto the beach, and the Lang Air actually means long beach, and this certainly is, it's about a mile long. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to get right along to the end of the beach, but this, this was good enough. And what was just about as impressive as the scenery was the sound of those pebbles, the waves bringing them in and then pulling them back. Absolutely beautiful. My God! What a place! Well, this is me on the beach, and what a place! I'm surprised this isn't used for some sort of sci-fi film out, Outlander style location, it is stunning. I think it's one of the most stunning places I've visited in Scotland. It is, it is breathtaking. Amazing and the sound of the waves and these sea stacks. It's absolutely lovely and the beach is called Lang Eyer Beach. I think it's Lang Eyer or Lang Air. But my god, if you're fit and you can do a bit of scrambling, it's a bit scrambly coming down there. You've got to come here. It's a bit of a trek to get here. You have to come over the highest point in Shetland, Aronis Hill, 
to come down, but I'm so glad that I've come here. It's just, <coughs> it's magical. It's absolutely stunning. Well, I've never seen anything like it. The colours, the cliffs, the sea stacks. It's just perfect. What a place. What a place. Well, let's go for a wee dawn for a bit further along. found a nice wee rock with a grand view to stop and get some refreshments and after doing that I decided to go for a little donder along the beach and try and find some nice photographs and shots to take. It wasn't too hard. What a place! What a place this is! And it's just about time for me to go because I've reached my cut-off point. I think it's going to take me a good two, three hours to get back to the car. I've got to go all the way back over Rona Sill, which it's about 1,500 feet, so it's a good bit of a ascent for me still to go. But this place is just so special. There's nobody else here. There's, there's nobody for miles. And when people talk about remote big beaches, you immediately think of Sandwood Bay. But I think this is probably harder to get to. And is it more spectacular? Well, from what I've seen here, this is the, the cliffs. The redness of the sand in the cliffs as well is very impressive. And the sound of the pebbles being drawn back down. It must be quite a steep drop off. And you can hear all the pebbles running backwards and forwards. It really is just... Absolutely magical. But anyway, I need to go or I'm going to be getting the head torch out and stumbling in the dark across some bogs. So let's, let's get back over the hill and back to the car. It was time for the long journey back to the car. And there's something really special about these remote, wild feeling places. And although probably not as wild and remote as some of the places in mainland Scotland in terms of distance from roads, this really did feel just as remote and wild as some of those really, really lonely, wild places in the mainland. Maybe more so. It just made it more special being there and having it all to myself. What a wonderful place and I can't recommend this place enough. <laughs>